G'day, and welcome back to the workshop. Some of you may have noticed this in the background of the first video, so let's have a look at this project and see what it's all about. Yeah, g'day, I'm Brendan, an Australian tradesman currently living in Berlin. First of all though, let's just have a quick backstory on the bus. This bus belongs to my family and it has for a few years. The family has a lot of good memories about the bus. I've done a few holidays and trips as well as just general living. The bus is a very convenient thing, especially with a larger family. And yeah, it gets put to good use. It's a bit of a workhorse, a commuter, travelling. And this is a T4 bus, or a T4 which is the first of the front engine generation um, and the last of the simple mechanically wise. So these T4s give you less problems and they're cheaper to fix. This is the more sought after version. It's a multi-van and it's got the 2.5 litre turbo diesel. It's quite economical, down as low as 6 litres per 100. A project like this is financially not viable. It's, this bus, I did say that it was shrot or scrap. Got to the point where two tips ago I said the bus should be sold. But no, we kept the bus. You know the story. And then this tiff, I thought I'll spend a week or two on the bus and I'll spruce it up a bit and make sure that it's safe. That was November. It's now August. When it comes to being viable, yes, we are crazy for repairing the bus. But if you think about it, we're not going to buy a brand new bus. This bus, brand new, is 60, 70,000 euros now to replace. The problem come with selling the bus is that nobody wanted to give you any money for the bus because everybody knows these things have a rust issue. So you have to pretty much sell the bus for scrap value. Then you have the issue of replacing the bus. Well, what do you replace the bus with? A T5, a T6, a Mercedes, something newer? Maybe you're going to spend 15, 16,000 euros. And maybe next TIFF, you've got rust issues that need to be patched and other mechanical issues. So we decided as a family to spend a bit of time and money on the bus. Of course, at that time, I thought it was gonna spend maybe two weeks on the bus. And now I'm at around the 300 hour mark, which does sound very crazy. And yes, it is crazy. And no, I would not have started the job if I realized how bad the rust was. But it's like one of those things. Once you're into the program, you just gotta keep going. So. It's nearing the end of the, uh, the metal fabrication part and it'll soon be off to paint. Anyway, I'll show you around the bus a bit. I've got a little bit of footage and some pictures of the start of the process, so we'll have a look at that. Yeah, so this would just give you a bit of an idea of what we started out with. You can see it needs a bit of loving. The further we dug, the worse it got. This is some old repairs done by somebody else in the past. They just weld little plates on here and there. It's very common on vehicles this age over here. Then smear it with seam sealer, spray a bit of body deadener on it, hide it from the TIFF man, and everything's really good then, see? But yeah, you can see it's just riddled with holes. The further we went, the more we found. You know, the seal panels were gone, everything was gone, but once it started cutting into it, it just got worse and worse, and we were already gone too far, so we just kept going. So. I'll set up a bit of a time lapse here and just show you the process I went through rebuilding this front corner from scratch.
So here's the uh, little subframe type panel that goes from the chassis rail out to the front bumper. It's tacked together or welded together and finished off, pretty much ready to go in. Um, as you can see, I left a little bit extra material than what was on the template to make that lip, which has just been folded with a pair of pliers and then hammered to reasonably flat front section on it. I've joined it along here just for the pure fact that it's such an acute tight angle you could spend hours trying to fabricate that out of one piece um, and it's fully welded on the inside as well as the out. As you can see it's not very pretty still needs the end trimmed up and some holes put in and some captive nuts welded on there but that can be done on the vehicle um, so yeah sits in Obviously it needs some tapping in um, to get the gap to close up a bit, but uh, anyway, let's um, just give you an idea of how it's all fitting together. And you just keep cutting and cutting. Sorry about the shaky camera work and the fact that it was filmed vertically and not horizontally. Just got this panel just stitched in place um, and replaced all the, the second inner skin on the bottom of the B pillar. Um, this intermediate plate in the middle of the the sill panel so you've got an inner a middle and an outer the insides of all the jacking point the back of the jacking point and the front didn't cut the whole thing out it's because it was still structurally sound and just to save a bit of time and now I've just screwed the fender on and I'm just about to put the door on and, and check for alignment and then I'll, I'll put the the outer sill panel through there usually a, a genuine part this would be one part from here down to this same here but when you buy these uh, replacement panels which um, I think these ones are made in Poland they come with the option so uh, you know most people would just be replacing this for TIFF and these panels are all oversized panels they call them so they're made to slip over the top of of uh, the original panel so you can just hide the rust and paint it and, and get your TIFF done this will all be done once that structure here is finished. So it's it's actually tied in together now. It's all welded off. Nothing can move there. But once I get all this outside part done and that holds all that crush cell together in the right shape, then I will cut out inside the step and up on the wheel arch, fill in that lip on the inside there. Then everything's done. So yeah, I'll just show you where I'm up to. I've got this corner all screwed in, in position. Just about ready to weld that off. That's the yeah, inner fender area. So it's been checked with the fender and the door on, everything lines up, so weld it all off and then all this hole gets trimmed back to the right profile. All the slots and holes for the, the fender seem to be in position. Um, the new chassis rail corner extension's in position. It just needs to be tapped up a little bit in this corner as I start welding it off. Um, I've just finished welding in this new little top in the, in the wheel arch. And this replacement panel on the inner wheel arch front of the inside step, of course the jacking point's been re-welded, new, new metal in there, the outer dog leg, I joined it through here, grafted it on to make it one piece from here in the seal panel all the way to here where it joins the fender, there's a, a, a gap in the panel there so it's it should uh, be the same as what it was 20 years ago when it came out of the factory, so I'll get welding. Once I've got those two bits welded in, then it's the final piece here. 
inner fender which which I've made up. Still not exactly the right shape, but that joins that joins the front of the wheel arch to the rear and seals the the inner wheel arch to the outer fender. So that'll be the last process here on the fender area, and then I will start filling in some holes like this in the doorstep and the inner floor. Fun, fun, fun. You know, with rust, it's never a smaller job than what you first assume. Even if you think it's gonna be a huge job, well, it just keeps coming. I thought this was just a small hole, really, but there we go. This skin, that skin, this skin. Mmm, I love my job. And now the next part of the job underneath. Mm -mm. Hello. <laughs> You know how to do this. I've never done it before, but let's work it out, eh? Got it. Oh, we have gas. Ah, smoke -o time. My favourite time of the day. Time to sit down and have a bit of a ponder about life. Think about what the bloody hell am I doing here? Who the bloody hell bought this bus? What the bloody hell am I gonna do with it? How can I get out of doing it? Should I just pull the pin? How can I call the shrop man? Can we get it out of here? Well, I finished my coffee and I climbed under here to assess the situation and I poked around a bit. You never guess what I found. I've actually removed it already without filming, but I found a bit of rust. That was here. This is all wax. That's why I bought the blowtorch to get rid of wax and stuff. So I'll melt that out, start cleaning up, and see what can be saved. I've got a cut on my finger. I actually did it the other day on this little jagged thing here. And it makes it hard to push the stop button on the screen. It doesn't register when I'm pushing the button, so that's what that was all about. But anyway. I'll just melt it out. What could go wrong here? Don't mind that dripping on you. Some people enjoy a bit of hot wax, but this isn't that kind of show. She ain't 50 shades of grey here, she's 50 shades of rust. Oh wow! Hurts a bit, eh? make a patch for this step area. I'll just show you how I do it roughly. Doesn't have to be fancy, just got to be safe and solid and it's down the test of time. Close enough. Blind man would be happy to see that. And there we go. All welded in. The finished product. Didn't come up too bad, I suppose. For a patch job. All right.
right, so that's the sheet metal work on the front of this bus done. Um, so I'll just show you now, I'm just about to put the first coat of that industrial offshore primer on there. So you'll never see the bare metal again. It'll probably actually look quite crap afterwards. There's that patch on the front that I discovered yesterday. Patch up there, patch there, patch there, patch there, patch there. Patch down here. I will paint all of the inner guard and those associated patches and that chassis rail there and in underneath and I'll paint the fender up until this point here and I'll let the lack man or probably me will be the lack man worry about that when it's time to put the actual uh, proper top coats on um, and yeah in here too this will all be done with the heavy duty offshore primer there'll be two or three coats of that and then body shorts underneath which is the polyurethane body shorts which is paintable um, and then I put tar on over the top last thing just to make sure everything's really really sealed and everything's got layers and layers of protection <laughs> Okay, so this looks a little bit unconventional, but this is something that I've worked out in recent times here in Germany, is to use the body Schultz gun to spray in a thin down version of the primer into all the edges and the seams. It blows the primer right through the seam. And you gotta remember these vehicles are driven in the salt. So the Schultz gun also gives a textured finish, which underneath the vehicle looks a lot like the the body shorts from the factory when it's finally finished after a few coats and then after one coat of the primer I'll put the seam sealer on on every gap and edge um, to really keep the moisture out and then two more coats of the offshore primer and then the urethane body shorts and then the tar over the top of that so it's really good also to blow the primer right into all the cavities too. And there you go, that's the finished product. As you can see, it's got a horrible looking textured finish, which usually you don't want inside an engine bay. I'm not too worried about the finish. I just really want to keep the salt water out of everything and give it a really good durable coat on everything. job that just keeps giving. Which has resulted in this and the floorboards out and the carpet too will come out. Okay, I think that's enough Volkswagen bus rust repairs for this video. We might carry on with that in the next one. But for now, the Lupo's on the blink. The alt notice Fritz and of course the charge light come on 500 meters before the motor stopped and I come to a rolling halt on the side of the street so just pulling the alternator out in the car park at home and just found another example of German engineering at its finest <laughs> the mecca of engineering hey Germany and they can't even get a bolt to clear a chassis rail Please, please subscribe. The sooner you subscribe, the sooner I can buy a Toyota and get away from this shit. Let's do my head in. Right now, I'm just gonna uh, get to the workshop to find a uh, spare alternator for the old girl and uh, get it going so I can get to work in the morning. So I'd like to say, Thank you to everybody for watching the video and thanks for all the positive comments. If you could leave a comment on this page down below and I'll get back to you and maybe some suggestions as to what I can improve, etc. 
and thank you for all the positive comments I've got on text messages and Facebook but if you really like to make an idiot happy maybe you could just push that subscribe button for me yeah we'll build up the channel we've got to get to a thousand subscribers so see how quick we can get to there blondie i'll bring your bike back in a minute yeah thanks for that so yeah i'm off to the workshop to get an alternator so i'll see you next time cheers